today we are going to discuss regarding this microwave processing and dielectric properties of food materials so basically before moving on to this uh, dielectric uh, properties and uh, processing part first let us understand what are microwaves so as you can see on this screen it is uh, showing the electromagnetic spectrum so here we are seeing that according to wavelength or we can also say according to frequency so if we fix one another is automatically fixed by a, a very well known relationship physical relationship so we can see microwaves are in this range so uh, can you see this range here microwaves so microwaves are in this range so basically in this particular part of electromagnetic spectrum what we can can uh, see here or what we can have here is that basically this is a range so the range of values for wavelengths which is ranging from 10 cm not 10 cm 1 cm to 10 cm are coming under the microwave spectrum so basically this you can see what is the size of various objects that are corresponding to this particular wavelength and also you can see that various electromagnetic waves where can they penetrate and up till which part so here you are seeing penetrates earth atmosphere wherever you are seeing why that means that particular part of electromagnetic spectrum can penetrate earth's at atmosphere that means if there is some radiation electromagnetic radiation in this, that particular wavelength range then it can reach from earth surface to space and vice versa so it can penetrate the earth atmosphere and wherever you are seeing this n means for no here we are having these particular spectrums which cannot travel through the earth's atmosphere and we are also having some gray shaded areas here so in these gray shaded area we are having some transition zones transition zones means that some part of wavelength may penetrate earth atmosphere partially so in this particular part the wavelength in this particular spectrum part can penetrate the earth atmosphere sphere and reach the earth surface from space and vice versa so what it means is out of various wavelengths available this is the part in which my, uh, we are talking about microwaves so in this part the frequency if we talk about the frequency ranges from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz so what does that mean basically what we are having is 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz and there are some standards so according to this federal communication commission of us they have categorized microwaves as ism frequencies that means industrial scientific and medical frequency so what this mean is that as we are having overlapping within the spectrum of various wavelengths for electromagnetic waves some wavelengths or some frequencies are designated specifically for a particular use so out of those specific use the usage of those frequency in industrial scientific and medical areas are clubbed together and categorized as ism frequencies i for industrial as for scientific and m for medical so here you can see in this table microwave frequencies assigned for ism use so we are having two different ranges one is in the radio waves range and another one is in the microwave range so as per this standard allocation of the frequency we are having this microwave range 896 this is frequency then 915 then 2450 5800 and 
टू फोर टू टू फाइव किलो दिस इज इन द किलो हर्ट्स रेंज सो दिस नॉट किलो हर्ट्स दिस इज इन द मेगा हर्ट्स रेंज किलो हर्ट्स रेंज वॉज फॉर द रेडियो वेब्स होल अदर अदर फ्रीक्वेंसीज इन दिस कॉलम इज इन द मेगा हर्ट्स रेंज हेयर यू कैन सी दिस इज इन द मेगा हर्ट्स रेंज सो आउट ऑफ दीज सिक्स फाइव डिफरेंट माइक्रोवेव फ्रीक्वेंसीज टू ऑफ दैम दिस नाइन वन फाइव एंड टू फोर फाइव जीरो frequencies are specifically used for industrial and scientific purposes basically in the area of food processing so if we go for calculation of the wavelength overall the range of microwave frequency is from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz which gives us that the microwave frequencies are coming under 1 to 1 cm to 1 meter range of wavelength and out of that 1 cm to 1 meter wavelength whole of that wavelength may not penetrate throughout the material through which it is desired to do so so here you can see that 915 wavelength is 33 cm but it is only penetrating up to 5 cm so this is penetration depth for highly absorbing material so depending on the properties of the material through which the microwaves are traveling or into which the microwaves are penetrating the penetration depth is variable despite of the fact that the frequency and wavelength are fixed for a particular selected range then also uh, for different materials the penetration depth depends on the properties of that particular material here we are seeing that in the case of 12.2 cm wavelength which is 2450 we are having a penetration depth of 1 to 2 cm only so what does this indicates this indicates that if we are going for processing of food by microwaves then we are required to reduce the size of food material or particle such that it is its radius is this particular value so that whole of the food material can be penetrated throughout by the microwaves because if we are uh, taking radius that means overall depth or overall width of the food material will be equal to double this value and microwaves as they are uh, coming from various angles from several sides then they can reach from outside towards the center of the food particles so it can penetrate all over or throughout the food product are you getting this or not yes sir so how does microwave heating works basically microwave heating works on the principle of microwave uh, this uh, dipole interaction and ionic interaction basically we are having two different uh, uh, principles of, for, for for which this microwave heating works so uh, before going on to that uh, uh, let me just show you this elect, uh, for this electromagnetic spectrum as the frequency is decreasing the wavelength is increasing so here you can see the type of electromagnetic waves gamma rays which are having highest frequency then x rays a bit lower frequency ultraviolet than visible and microwaves and radio waves are having lowest frequency but the longest wavelength so if we are having high frequency then short wavelength will be there and here you can see the typical usage of these particular electromagnetic radiations besides the type of electromagnetic radiation given to you here in this particular part now physical principle microwave range as i have already told you it is in the band or range of 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz and if we are having this particular frequency range by using this particular equation which is very well known equation which is uh, that c which is speed of light is equal to frequency times wave so if we multiply frequency by wavelength for any electromagnetic wave then we get a speed of light so speed of light is a universal constant it has a fixed value and we already know that so what is the value of speed of light 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second good 
so uh, by putting that value here in the place of c and by putting the value of frequency from this range 300 megahertz one time then uh, a second time again solving 300 gigahertz for the frequency value we can get the value of wavelength and that wavelength for this particular frequency range comes out to be 1 meter to 1 millimeter not centimeter uh, uh, previously i said centimeter i think so it is ranging from 1 meter to 1 millimeter so it is a very wide range with respect to the scale of length and also with respect to scale of frequency band here we are seeing megahertz to gigahertz so here also we are having a factor of 1000 so what is the difference between mega and giga it is 10 raised to 3 so 300 megahertz if it increases by 10 raised to 3 means it is multiplied by 1000 it becomes 300 gigahertz similarly is the case with 1 millimeter and 1 meter it is also 10 raised to 3 1000 times difference is there so we have a very wide range due to this very wide range this classification has been done and out of this classification these five frequencies only two of those frequencies are used for food processing this 915 megahertz and 2450 megahertz and specifically for domestic microwave ovens for domestic purposes the frequency range used is 2450 megahertz and for industrial purposes it is 915 megahertz and why is it so is because in the case of food processing for domestic purpose the scale of processing is less we process very small quantities of food at home for cooking purposes for eating purposes and all with respect to if we compare it with the industrial production so what it means here you can see the penetration depth of this higher frequency is less and for lower frequency is more so we can process large chunks of food by using this lower frequency we are having high penetration depth and small size or chunks of food by using larger frequency are you getting this thing here yes. okay so uh, moving on further uh, the case of microwave heating it is one of the method of thermal processing first conveyor belt microwave application started in 1962 so it is as old as 1962 with respect to its practical application and it was due to slow development of high power microwave generator because to use the microwave you first need to generate the microwaves so i would be also telling about uh, you about how do we generate microwaves and other things related to it so first major applications for finish drying of potato chips so we get potato chips from market pre-processed ones some of them not all of them are processed in final finish drying with microwave heating so in the case of potato chips you can see how thin is it so in that case we can use higher frequencies than pre-cooking of poultry bacon tempering of frozen food drying of pasta etc now coming on to the properties of this as these microwaves are also electromagnetic radiations just like light they have similar properties to visible light are you getting this microwaves are electromagnetic radiations electromagnetic they comes under electromagnetic spectrum just like light so they are having similar properties to light and what are those properties which we know about light is that it can be focused into beams so what it means with respect to microwaves is that just like we can manufacture or we can create torches out of uh, light we can also create torches out of microwaves that can be used as weapons so we can focus microwaves at some part so that part can become tremendously hot and can be dangerous to the part on which it has been focused so depending on its use it can be used as a cutting tool heating tool or it can also be used 
as a weapon. So we can have some microwave guns which you might have come across in some movies also. Then they can transmit through hollow tubes just like light. Light can pass through hollow tubes. Microwaves can also pass through hollow tubes. So what it means here in this case is we can provide a path for microwaves to bend, to flow, to go through. Then it may transmit through material without absorption. So as we know that light can pass through transparent materials just like glass or some transparent plastic film. So can microwaves. But the things which are transparent to light may not be transparent to microwaves. So they can be transmitted through materials without absorptions and such materials will be termed as microwave transparent material. They may not be transparent to visible light. So it depends on the properties of material which will be coming soon on to. Then depending on the materials dielectric properties they can be reflected or absorbed by the material as well. So as light can be reflected, light can be absorbed, so can microwaves. So we are having three properties or three uh, basically interaction of light with some uh, material. Light can be either reflected or absorbed or transmitted. So if light is falling on something, then it has to do at least one of these three things or a combination of all three. Some part can be reflected, some part can be absorbed, some part can be just transmitted through. Same is the case with microwaves. So it depends upon the properties of the material because microwaves when we are focusing or when we are uh, uh, just letting the microwaves fall on something, the microwave properties are already fixed. So what it depends is on the properties of the material onto which the microwaves are falling. So glass, ceramics, thermoplastics, these are three kind of material which allow microwaves to pass through with little or no absorption. So as we know that glass is transparent to light, but ceramics and thermoplastics are not. But still they are transparent to microwaves. That is why we can use the utensils made out of ceramics and thermoplastics in microwave oven and still we can still heat process the food. My, uh, microwaves are non-ionizing radiant and they interact with food and generate heat in the food material. So these two are very important properties out of these all that firstly they are non-ionizing that means they do not produce any free radicals so they are in this case safer to use in uh, with respect to uh, this uh, effect of ionization and the interaction of microwaves with food generate heat so this is the major application for which we are studying the microwave in this particular part here. Have you understood all this thing which I have told to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now coming on to the principles. So, uh, they are produced by interaction of field due to electric charge and magnetic field. As we know, they are electromagnetic waves. So, they are to be produced by both electric and magnetic field interaction combined. So how to produce microwave? We can produce microwave just like we can produce radio waves. We can produce any electromagnetic wave. So they are produced as a result of interaction of two fields, electric field and magnetic field. Both these two fields are required to oscillate at same frequency and at 90 degrees or perpendicular to each other to generate this kind of electromagnetic radiations. Is this clear? Yes, sir. So microwaves generators are two, klystron and magnetron. So out of these two, we will be focusing basically on magnetron, which is in your syllabus. But you must know that microwaves can be generated by two different devices. One is klystron, another one is magnetron. We will be studying magnetron in details. Okay. So microwave generator 
आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स टू डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ जनरेटर्स आर देयर नाउ बिफोर जनरेटिंग वी आर वी जस्ट विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन दिस हीटिंग मैकेनिज्म दैट हाउ डज दीज माइक्रोवेव हीट द फूड सो इन द फूड व्हाट डू वी हैव इज वी आर हैविंग बेसिकली वाटर वट एवर फूड वी आर प्रोसेसिंग बाई हीट इट जनरली और ऑलवेज वी कैन से हैज सम अमाउंट ऑफ वॉटर इन इट एंड वॉटर एज यू नो इज ए पोलर मॉलिक्यूल सो वी कैन हैव अ पार्शियल नेगेटिव साइड इन द मॉलिक्यूल ऑन वन ऑफ द एंड एंड ऑन द अपोजिट एंड वी विल बी हैविंग अ पॉजिटिव साइड सो वॉट हैपन्स एज माइक्रोवेवस आर प्रोड्यूसिंग ऑसिलेटिंग इलेक्ट्रिकल फील्ड इन द फूड मैट्रिक्स सो वेन वी आर हैविंग नेगेटिव एंड पॉजिटिव इन दिस डायरेक्शन डाइपोल विल बी ट्राइंग टू अलाइन इट सेल्फ इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ दिस इलेक्ट्रिकल फील्ड सो दिस प्लस साइड विल ट्राई टू रोटेट इन दिस एरो डायरेक्शन माइनस साइड विल बी ट्राइंग टू रोटेट इन दिस एरो डायरेक्शन एंड एज सुन एज इट इज रोटेटिंग इट स्टार्ट रोटेटिंग इट इज जस्ट रीचिंग द अलाइनमेंट एट द सेम टाइम दिस फील्ड रिवर्सेज बिकॉज द माइक्रोवेव आर एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अप टिल हियर चेंजिंग देयर डायरेक्शन ऑफ फील्ड एट द रेट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी मेगा हट्स विच मीन्स इट इज चेंजिंग द पोलैरिटी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल फील्ड एट द रेट ऑफ टू पॉइंट फोर फाइव बिलियंस टाइम्स पर सेकेंड so it is a very great speed very tremendous speed at which the polarity of field changes and as in the case of food matrix we are not just having water we are having other components also even if we are having 100% water then also all the water molecules will not be in the same alignment state otherwise it will not be having a neutral sides all side because if all the molecules align in one direction then one of the side will be negative another side will be positive it can be used as a capacitor or a battery but it doesn't happen because all the water molecules never align so as these molecules are aligning at this rate 2.45 billion times they twist and turn they collide with each other they collide with other food particles other components which are maybe organic inorganic polar non polar ionic uh, uh, covalent bond etc and they produce very high friction and the heat is generated as a result of friction are you getting this particular mechanism yes sir yes sir so heat is generated by alignment of dipolar molecules so not only water is the dipolar molecule we are having several other molecules in our food which are polar and all the polar molecules will interact with the electric field of microwaves so absorption of microwave energy by water molecule this is the first thing that is generating heat but in the food matrix we also have some ionic compounds like salt common salt nacl we are having nas plus and cl minus so as we are having aqueous media na plus and cl minus can travel independently of each other they need not to be joined together just like this typo so we can have plus part separate from minus part they can travel independently so microwaves are producing this electric field similar for both ionic as well as polar compounds polar molecules and both those polar and ionic molecules will be trying to align with the electric field polar molecules will be only trying to align with the uh, electric field but ionic molecule ion will be attracted towards reverse or inverse polarity side so suppose this is plus uh, ion this is minus ion negative ion and positive ion then this positive ion will run towards this negative side negative uh, this positive ion will run towards this negative side and negative ion will run towards this positive side and uh, in this uh, in the path it will uh, it will collide with with 
many other molecules and atoms and produce friction again and before reaching this side the polarity reverses so this is how ionic component of food also generate frictional heat so basically how microwaves are heating they are heating by friction molecules vibrate they produce friction and that friction results into heat so microwaves are not directly heating any food particle as such. so are you getting this both heating mechanisms are you getting this yes sir so uh, in this slide this this is showing that interaction of electromagnetic field with the material we can have three kind of uh, interaction either electromagnetic radiation can be absorbed so it can be absorbed in food oil water wood etc so whatever material is having this ionic and polar molecule will absorb the microwaves then it can be transmitted so transparent material should be there transparent to the Uh, uh, microwaves so we can have beds trays dishes etc through which the microwaves can travel across and reach the food matrix then reflection so we can reflect the microwaves so it can be used just like mirror for light so we can use these kind of materials as applicators and wave guides so all three kind of interaction are leading us to various application of those particular materials with respect to microwaves so in the case of absorption we are having food itself in the case of transmission the materials which are capable to transmit microwaves can be used as utensils trays dishes belts conveyors etc and materials which are capable to reflect the microwaves can be used as applicators that microwaves can be applied through them they can be used as wave guide that microwave is being generated at some uh, some part and it is then being reflected again and again and directed towards some other part now uh, ionic polarization that i have told you dipole also i have told you now coming on to this uh, uh, properties now what are the dielectric properties of the food which are uh, taking role or taking uh, uh, care of this microwave interaction basically electrical properties of materials being heated they are known as dielectric properties and those dielectric properties they are relative dielectric constant which is uh, referred to by the symbol epsilon uh, dash and it is also known as ability of a material to store electrical energy so when a material is able to store electrical then what does that mean it means that it is able to keep the charges separated so positive charges on one side and on opposite side negative charges can be stored in a material then this property or this ability for that material to store this electrical energy just like as in the case of batteries or capacitors is known as or referred to by dielectric constant so this is relative dielectric constant epsilon not and next property is relative dielectric loss which is epsilon double dash and it is the ability of material to dissipate the electrical energy so electric energy while getting stored or transmitted or absorbed or reflected not in the especially in the case of reflection but in the case of transmission and absorption the electrical energy can be dissipated so what do we mean by dissipation of electrical energy is conversion of electrical energy into heat energy so that is loss of electrical energy and gain of heat energy and that is how electrical energy can be dissipated through the food matrix and this property or this ability of material is referred to by relative dielectric loss which is epsilon double dash so here loss means conversion of electric energy to heat energy and relative in these two properties relative to free space so they are not absolute because these dielectric properties are also there for free space free space means uh, uh, a pure vacuum the conditions in the space uh, 
after atmosphere that is free space so with respect to that they are relatively uh, relative to that and we are having one more property which relates these two properties uh, which is interrelating these two properties so which is uh, also called as or known as loss tangent so this tan delta here you can see tan delta this tan delta is known as loss tangent and this tan equal to epsilon double dash by epsilon dash so it is dielectric loss by dielectric constant and it provides an indication how well the material can be penetrated by electric field and how it dissipates the electrical energy as heat energy so what do we mean by this is so this is dissipation factor or loss tangent dielectric loss goes through a material maximum as dielectric constant falls because here we are seeing that tan delta is epsilon double dash by epsilon dash epsilon double dash was loss loss factor and uh, this the uh, epsilon dash is the dielectric constant so when will be the value of this tan delta maximum it will be maximum when epsilon double dash is maximum and epsilon dash is minimum so both these conditions are required to happen simultaneously to maximize this tan delta what is the value maximum value tan can anybody tell range of this function trigonometric function tan what what it ranges between 0 to 1 no anybody else tan 0 to 1 can i no trigonometric function tan does not range from 0 to infinite it ranges in between minus infinite to plus infinite you you must not forget these trigonometric ratios from your lower standard classes they are very useful and will be carried forward in your studies just don't forget them so in this case we are having this tan delta as a ratio of two properties dielectric constant and dielectric loss and both of these properties are non negative so here in this particular case case of dissipation factor or loss tangent it will range from 0 to infinity it will not be ranging in negative directions because we are not having any negative values in uh, out of both these two properties otherwise tan itself ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity but for loss tangent or dissipation factor it ranges in between 0 to infinity so it means that um, electromagnetic radiation it is not just with respect to microwaves it is with respect to any electromagnetic radiation so any electromagnetic radiation can penetrate either 0 meters or 0 cm mm or whatever unit you give it to infinite meters means it can just uh, the material can just be transparent also so when it is tan delta value is 0 that means it is having total loss whatever energy in the form of microwave in the form of electrical energy is given to the material all that energy is dissipated on its surface and none of the energy penetrates inside the food matrix or the material so when tan delta is zero means dielectric loss is is at its highest value or dielectric constant is it at its lowest value or both at the same time so it means all the energy is dissipated at the surface nothing penetrates and when tan delta is having higher values towards infinite or towards very high values that means material is practically transparent to the electromagnetic wave being talked about so when the tan delta value is higher that means uh, this uh, uh, material can be uh, transparent to the energy or uh, to the electromagnetic radiation being talked about now coming on to the conversion of microwave energy into heat energy so we are having one relationship so this relationship you need to remember it it will be coming uh, as uh, for you you to use in 
numerical examples and exercises which you will be coming uh, doing in the upcoming classes also so this is pd which is power dissipation in this unit unit also you need to remember otherwise there will be some uh, mistakes in the calculation what per centimeter cube so this is volumetric power dissipation and it is uh, equal to 55.61 into 10 is to power minus 12, uh, 14 times e square this capital e is electrical field strength in this unit volts per centimeter into f f is the frequency means that uh, frequency of microwaves then uh, relative dielectric constant and tan delta so this is law loss tangent we can also replace this tan delta by epsilon double dash by epsilon dash so in that case this e dash tan delta becomes e double dash so we can use any of those two properties so if we are required to calculate how much power will be dissipated in the food matrix by using this equation what we need is we need the values of these things this electrical field strength frequency relative dielectric constant and loss tangent out of this relative dielectric constant loss tangent are the properties of the food which can be uh, referred to from some standard tables just like steam table and refrigeration charts we are having similarly food properties are uh, also available and f is the frequency so as we know that for uh, domestic purpose it is 2450 for industrial it is 915 megahertz we, we can uh, uh, convert it into hertz and place it here so what we are left with is this e in terms of volt per centimeter which is very difficult to calculate so once we get the value of e the value of this electrical field strength in this uh, unit then we can calculate the power dissipation so as we cannot get it directly we need some other equations for calculation how much power can be uh, dissipated in the food for that we can apply some other heat transfer equations so this is one of the heat transfer equation which you are very familiar about this is Fourier's equation in three dimensions out of this only one dimension in this x has been considered so this is Fourier's equation in three dimension out of this three dimension yes. c and z has been removed so here you are seeing tau square t by tau x square and not tau square t by tau y square plus tau square t by tau z square that has been removed why it has been removed is because what we are considering is we are considering the case that we are having penetration of microwave energy from all sides from outside towards inside so when we are using microwave energy to heat process any food then it is processing the uh, or heating the food from outside towards inside so microwave heating does not occurs from center of the food from outside uh, towards outside of the food it is just like the conventional heating process but the difference between the conventional heating and microwave heating is that as this is a electromagnetic wave it can be for focused or transmitted from any direction uh, which is unlike the conventional fire fire will be uh, heating from the bottom only and uh, at most from the sides if the flame is high but not from the top so microwaves can be directed towards the food from all sides whole 360 degrees in three dimensions so what we are considering is we are considering the case of a sphere and that sphere is being heated from outside towards the center so only one directional heat transfer is up. so what was this tau square t by tau x square it was the double differential of temperature with respect to x or with respect to the direction of heat this q was the rate of heat generation k is the thermal conductivity of the material rho is density of material cp is specific heat and here tau t again tau t this this is the same temperature as in this uh, here k thermal conductivity and tau small t small t is for time 
so it is with respect to time so rho cp by k this is one upon alpha or a thermal diffusivity of the material so how this equation can be used with respect to the previous equation which i have all already showing on to this slide only this power can be converted in the form of heat transfer or heat generation because power is being dissipated in the food matrix that means whatever amount of power is being generated dissipated in the food matrix is generating heat and that heat generation term is here q so it can be uh, converted in suitable units so what would be the unit of this q it is rate of heat generation also volumetric so rate of heat generation is joules per second per unit volume joules per second is watts so it is watt per unit volume and which is same as this power dissipation watt per centimeter cube so if we are considering unit volume as centimeter cube so this q and pd is same are you getting this the students are you getting this yes okay now coming on to the penetration depth of microwave that how far microwaves can penetrate inside the food matrix so it can be determined by a relationship which is based on a factor known as attenuation factor uh, symbolized by this symbol alpha dash can be which can be calculated as 2 pi by lambda lambda is wavelength epsilon dash already known under root 1 plus 10 square delta 10 square 10 delta you already know and this whole is in under root again power 1 by 2 means under root so this is the attenuation factor and by using this attenuation factor we can calculate this penetration depth as this so this is the uh, uh, z z is the penetration depth and here you can see that it is similar to this previous equation so what is the similarity that it is inverse of attenuation factor so 1 by alpha dash is z so penetration of electrical field which can be calculated from the attenuation factor is this that how much depth below the surface of material is it so z is z is that value where the electrical field strength is 1 by e that of electrical field in free space so what do we mean by this so this is with respect to this here you you just see we are having this equation which is with respect to this uh, lambert law lambert law is indicating that whatever incident power is there for any electromagnetic radiation for any material if we are focusing a electromagnetic radiation on to some material then how far that electromagnetic radiation's power will penetrate will be given by p by p not is equals to a raised to power constant and that constant will be uh, uh, with respect to how do we calculate this penetration depth so basically here you can see p is incident uh, p is the power at penetration depth p not is the incident power e is that natural uh, base for natural log e number e minus 2 alpha dash d d is the penetration depth so if we calculate the value at which this power is 1 by e times so this power is 1 by e times this p not so what will be uh, will it become it will become that p by p not will be equal to e raised to power minus 1 because p is 1 by e e raised to power minus 1 so e raised to power here it is minus 2 alpha dash d and here it will be minus 1 so 2 alpha dash d will be equal to 1 so that means d is equal to 1 uh, by 2 alpha so that 1 by 2 alpha has been used here so here you can see this is inverse of that alpha where the field strength is 1 by e that is the penetration depth and alpha is calculated as this uh, which is an attenuation factor more on this you can just focus on to that uh, notes part which i have shared with you in the form of pdf file this table is showing some uh, dielectric properties of food materials 
एट दिस फ्रीक्वेंसी सो एपसाइलन डैश एंड एपसाइलन डबल डैश फॉर वेरियस फूड मटीरियल सो हेयर इन दिस टेबल वी कैन सी दैट वॉट थिंग कैन एब्सॉर्ब माइक्रोवेव मोर एंड वॉट थिंग कैन लेट द माइक्रोवेव पास मोर so epsilon double dash was loss factor the value wherever this epsilon da double dash is high here, here you can see 71 here you can see 25 23 so this is all with water so water as it is a dipolar uh, molecule and then we are having this uh, uh, ionic substance also included here 5% nai which is sodium iodide then we are having value very high here so it means it can lose energy faster faster loss of energy means it will be heating faster because it is having more of these molecules which are having this uh, principle uh, which are generating heat by friction here in the case of ice as all molecules of water are bound together here the value is very low so using microwaves melting ice is very slow by using fire it can be very fast because of these properties despite of the fact it is also pure water and pure water here you are seeing the values are higher so as compared to this at 1.5 degree celsius water has 25 value this uh, epsilon double dash but at 0 degree if it is ice then it is very very less so uh, generation of heat will be very slow so thawing will be very slow microwave by using microwaves thawing will be very slow uh, second definition of penetration depth is half depth half power depth so in that case we keep this p by p not as 1 by 2 instead of 1 by epsilon 1 uh, by e so by calculating this the d will come out to be 0.347 upon uh, uh, this attenuation factor so it means it is 37 uh, 34.7% of this uh, 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 power so whatever power we are having that uh, power will be 34.7% only two values of this thing now uh, penetration depth has also been uh, uh, tabulated in this table you can just go through it so here you are seeing penetration depth for ice at minus 12 degree uh, uh, this this is 1160 this is in si units means this is relatively transparent to microwaves penetration depth value is 1160 that means if we are having 1160 meter of ice slab continuous ice slab microwave can pass through it so it is transparent to ice just like glass is transparent to light now coming on to the oven itself so basically what happens in the microwave oven so this is a picture of our domestic microwave oven basically what parts it has it is showing in this picture so we are having this power coming to the power supply unit so it, uh, and this uh, from this power supply unit it is going to this control unit this control unit is connected to this control panel which is shown in the front and uh, as per the sequence selected by the user the particular sequence will be executed by this control unit so it will control the power going to this magnetron and then this magnetron magnetron is the generator of microwave and when this generates microwave it generates these microwaves and they are directed to go into this wave guide so wave wave guide is just like a pipe through which microwaves are transmitted and then there is a wave stirrer so here you can see just like a fan or agitator so there is a stirrer so it stirs these waves so whatever waves are going because whenever these waves are going they are having a fixed pattern so they will be focusing on to a specific area or a point in the space where they are going so to avoid burning of that food particle which is present at that point and to uniformly distribute the energy of the microwaves throughout the microwave oven cavity for a uniform cooking of food this stirrer is there so what it does is it moves it is just like that fan or agitator it moves and it reflects the microwaves in several directions throughout the time where uh, when this mag magnetron is sending the microwave towards the oven cavity and by doing 
doing so, there there will be uniform distribution of microwave throughout this oven cavity. So this is the cooking oven cavity where we place the uh, uh, food items to be cooked. Then there is a platform which rotates. It is known as turn table. So this is a turn table. Then we are having door and choke. So at this door and choke, what happens? As soon as the door is open, immediately power supply is cut off from the magnetron. Then uh, if it is not done so, then what happens? The microwaves can leave or it can escape this oven cavity and enter towards the user side and user without knowing that he is being posed or he or she is being exposed to microwaves, heating effects of microwaves, any other ill effects of microwave can happen to them and there would be severe problems, severe damages to the body parts. So to avoid that, as soon as door opens, it cut off the power supply going to the magnetron. So there is an automatic switch that prevents the power going to the magnet. So there is a proximity. So, uh, are you uh, clear regarding what are the parts? Now we will go in towards this working. So, basically, uh, we are having the heart of microwave magnetron. What it does is it generates microwave and it is converting the electrical power into electromagnetic waves or micro. Magnetron also has its own part. So, it has an anode block, a cathode filament, permanent magnets, and antenna. So, basic four parts are there. So, we are having anode, cathode, anode is a block, cathode is a filler. Then we are having permanent magnets and an antenna. Antenna will radiate the microwaves, permanent magnet will create a magnetic field for its working. Now let's, let's see the construction and working of it. So basically this is a top view, cut section top view of a magnetron. So here you are seeing this circular element shown in grey with this tooth protruding towards the center. These tooths or teeth of are called as veins. They do not touch each other. They are uh, uh, protruding towards inside from this rim or external exterior part towards the center we are having a cathode filament. So we are having two separate blocks one is cathode which is just like a cylinder and an anode which is like a hollow cylinder with these parts which are shown in gray left out suppose we are having a solid cylinder which is bored with this diameter so we are having a pipeline a thick pipeline in the thickness wall thickness of pipeline we are again removing these white spaces so whatever white spaces here you can see resonant cavity so we are having many resonant cavities so this much part is also removed so what happens we are having this thinned kind of arrangement with internal fins so it is known as anode block and these fins or tooths will be called as vein as this is anode and cathode that means we are required or we are going to apply direct current so that we are having polarity so cathode and anode so cathode is negative charge anode is positive charge so here you can see this in highlighted text 3000 to 4000 volt dc is applied to anode so in the power supply what is done there is a high voltage transformers which transform household electrical supply which is 220 volts or 230 volts to 3000 to 4000 volts then it is rectified from alternating current to directional current and then further filtered to form direct current from directional current. So basically that circuitry part that, that is part of electronic engineering and uh, you do not need to focus on that in this regard. I am just telling you for your information and that is how we will be converting that alternating current power supply from the household electrical socket coming to the microwave into direct current with this mass voltage. So what will happen? The cathode filament which is shown in yellow colored in between in the center uh, cylindrical part will be having a high concentration of electrons which are uh, uh, very eager to leave the cathode and reach the anode. So it will be ionizing this space. So whatever electrons are there, they leave the cathode and they are just radially directed towards the anode. So we are having many pins or veins or pins or filaments or whatever you say, these veins. So these veins attract those electrons 
bronze because they are having positive charge. Cathode is having negative charge. 3000 to 4000 volt DC is there. So electron just leaves the cathode, reach the anode. To increase the emission of electrons from the cathode, cathode is further heated by a heating element. So there will be a heating element bound over cathode so that the cathode is heated. It is just like an electrical heating coil. So that coil will be heating the central cylindrical part cathode filament so that it increases the rate of emission of electrons. So when those electrons leave the cathode, reach the anode, they reach in radial direction, straight line in the radius part. But when they do so, what happens? We are having a electrical connection circuit complete. So uh, here in this case, uh, the, this is uh, a side view, cut section side view. This is those uh, anode block uh, fins or veins and we are having this cathode filament shown in between and there is a antenna going into waveguide and here this this two blue part these are permanent magnet so this permanent magnet what they do is they create a permanent magnetic field into this cavities formed by these anode blocks so in this resonant cavity shown to you here a magnetic field is created so what happens as soon as electron leave the cathode to reach the anode they are in a permanent magnetic field and as we know that moving charges in the permanent magnetic field experience a force due to that force those electrons cannot reach anode directly they spiral around they are twisted they are directed in a circular path so a very closely coiled spiral path is created for electron to reach the anode and when they reach anode they neutralize that charge or if they are in higher concentration they even produce negative charge at alternating pins or filament you, you just uh, see that part here so this is the cathode this is the direction in which the electrons will be there and it is biased to a high negative voltage then in this uh, uh, if there is no negative no magnetic uh, field present then they will be reaching in this direction now you see in this diagram what happens there will be a electron cloud or swarm of electrons shown in uh, this red dots. So they will be attracted to this positively charged part or fin. So when they are reaching this and they are rotating because of presence of magnetic field. They touch this negative side, uh, this side and make it negative and uh, as compared to uh, other things, there is a polarity difference. So when we are having two plates, one is negative, one is positive, we are creating a capacitor. So these two plates are serving as a capacitor and this side, so in this side, we are creating a loop of a coil. So it is just like this. So this is an equivalent circuit of one resonant cavity. So it is a LC circuit. So a inductor and a capacitor placed in a closed loop. So as we know then uh, that when uh, we are having a LC circuit then at a particular frequency it oscillates. So when this oscillates it produces micro. So this cloud of rotating electron it swirls around, it rotates. So in this direction, in this circular direction this space charge will it rotates so if this rotating pattern will be creating this alternating positive and negative plates so this positive negative plates will be forming a capacitor rest of the part of anode uh, cavity will be producing a inductor one coil one single loop inductor and this combination of a capacitor and inductor in a closed loop will act as a resonating circuit and that resonating circuit, this cavity will produce electromagnetic waves called as microwaves because of their frequency of resonance. Okay, so in this diagram also you can see 
that this is how this cathode and anode are placed this magnetic field is there and north pole and south pole are facing each other above magnet uh, uh, north pole is at this bottom side downward magnet south pole is on top side so that we are having a magnetic field from top to down direction due to this electrons field support and they are forced to circle around this cavity in this central part and as soon as they reach one of the pin one of the end they make it more negatively charged than adjacent thing and hence they produce a capacitor and inductor circuit okay and then one of the cavity any one of them will be having this antenna this output antenna shown to you here this output antenna will be going into wave guide it will be radiating these microwaves into the wave guide so it is coming out from the center part uh, through one of the magnets so this uh, anode film uh, uh, anode block is also required to be cooled because as soon as electrical circuit is completed there is heating effect of electricity and we are having very hot cathode as well as anode cathode is already heated anode becomes hot so anode will be required to be cooled so that its inductive and capacitive properties are retained okay this is how the uh, magnetron looks like with uh, magnets have been removed in this now coming on to the wave guide so wave, what is wave guide wave guide is a hollow metallic tube or a pipe which is used to transmit microwave energy to the oven chamber because microwave energy is produced in the magnetron but they are required in the oven cavity so we require a connection between these two and also we are required to uh, uh, do this connection in a manner so that the microwave energy can transmit from magnetron antenna to the oven cavity so we are required to divert or direct those microwaves so what uh, we can do for that is we can have uh, various cross section it can be rectangular circular or elliptical it can be rigid or flexible and uh, they are required to have very low loss low loss means that dielectric properties which we studied about so how they work so you just see that a ray can be reflected and due to multiple reflection this is how it can be directed through the wave guide to one place from another place so this this uh, diagram is showing how uh, various cross sections can be there now coming on to the wave stirrer so uh, in the first diagram i showed to you that uh, stirrer so uh, this rotating fan or uh, stirrer kind of thing so what it do is it, it reflects those microwave haphazardly throughout the oven cavity and due to that reflection the microwave energy is not concentrated on to some particular point or they are not focused into some particular point and hence they are uniformly distributed throughout the space so this is regarding this uh, uh, working of uh, microwave now coming on to the advantages and disadvantages so basically in this uh, uh, slide which i have already shared with you you can just go through the users advantages and disadvantages of the microwave heating uh, because uh, it is uh, uh, not uh, very much uh, things to be explained and most of the thing are self explanatory you just uh, go through it is there any questions or doubt hello sir Uh, sir i have one question sir after production of resonant circuit in anode block how this microwaves are produced microwaves are produced uh, as a result of accelerating electrons when electrons are emitted via cathode and they are inside a, a anode block so as soon as electron emits from cathode and is it, it is in close vicinity of that uh, anode means positive charge so electron accelerate towards it so here you can see that electrons is emitted electron gets emitted from cathode and anode is there when there is a positive and negative field uh, this charge is present so electron feels a force repels from cathode attracts to our anode whenever there is a force there is an acceleration so whenever there is an accelerating 
चार्ज एक्सेलरेटिंग चार्जेस आर नोन टू प्रोड्यूस इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन तो दिस इज द जेनेसिस ऑफ माइक्रो इफ द चार्जेस आर मूविंग विद ए कॉन्स्टेंट वेलोसिटी दे डू नॉट प्रोड्यूस रेडिएशन चार्जेस मूविंग एंड एक्सेलरेटिंग तो वाइल मूवमेंट दे आर रिक्वायर टू एक्सेलरेट इन बोथ साइड वेदर दे आर एक्सेलरेटिंग और डिसेलरेटिंग दे आर रिक्वायर टू चेंज देअर वेलोसिटी कंटिन्यूसली इफ दे आर नॉट चेंजिंग वेलोसिटी दे कैन नॉट प्रोड्यूस इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन एंड वाई दे आर प्रोड्यूसिंग माइक्रोवेव ओनली इज बिकॉज ऑफ द फ्रीक्वेंसी रेजोनेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ दट रेजोनेट कैबिटी ओके सो दैट फ्रीक्वेंसी कम्स इन द रेंज ऑफ दैट पर्टिक्युलर रेंज ऑफ माइक्रोवेव तो थ्री हंड्रेड मेगा हर्ट टू थ्री हंड्रेड गीगा हर्ट की रेंज में जो फ्रीक्वेंसी अगर एल सी ऑसिलेशन की होंगी तो जो रेडिएशन आएगी वो माइक्रोवेव रेंज में ही है तो एल सी ऑसिलेशन जो है उसको इस तरह डिजाइन किया जाता है दैट वैल्यू ऑफ एल एंड वैल्यू ऑफ सी आर सच दैट फ्रीक्वेंसी कम इन दिस रेंज टू फोर फाइव जीरो सो लेट मी गो टू दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट हेयर तो सपोज देर इज अ कंडीशन और केस वेन वी आर हैविंग मोर देन वन काइंड ऑफ सब्सटेंस प्रेजेंट इन द माइक्रोवेव अवन कैविटी देन इन दैट केस हाउ शेल वी कैलकुलेट और कंप्यूट द रिलेटिव हीटिंग और रिलेटिव एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ माइक्रोवेव एनर्जी बाई दैट पर्टिकुलर फूड सो हेर यू कैन सी देन रेट ऑफ एनर्जी एब्जॉर्बन बाय द फूड having different dielectric properties will be having different dielectric uh, heating rate so we are using subscript 1 and 2 to represent component a and component 2 component 1 and component 2 so in that case if we are calculating this q1 so by using that uh, previous equation we can put it as this constant and the v which was here we can put that v into this side by replacing it by mass over density so m1 is for mass of that component 1 and rho1 is the density of that particular component 1 f frequency this is a uh, radiation property not food property so it would not be having any subscript or superscript similarly for e which is electric field strength then this epsilon double dash which is dielectric loss or loss factor it will be having different values for different components of food so that is why it will be epsilon 1 double dash for component 1 and epsilon 2 double dash for component and whatever is the overall power input to the microwave would be some part would be absorbed by component 1 which is q1 another part would be absorbed by component 2 which is q2 overall power will be p is equal to q1 plus q2 so we are using a binary system so in that case what will happen is if we are combining these two then we can see that p is equals to q1 plus q2 so here these components which were different will be added everything else is common and can be brought out of this bracket so to calculate the relative relative heat transfer rate q1 by p which is out of total power how much is the q1 we can divide these two equation this two relationship one is this relationship another one is that previous one with respect to q1 so what is the difference which we are having is you can see this is equal to this particular expression and also we know that this q1 which is the energy absorbed by component 1 will be heating it so as we are talking about microwave heating so when the component is being heated its temperature is rising then we can use the equation of heat transfer which is q is equal to mcp delta t and as this q was the rate of heat transfer so we will also require to keep it as per unit time as well so q1 is equal to m1 cp1 dt1 over this dt so capital t1 is for temperature difference which uh, component 1 has observed and this small t or dt is uh, within what small amount of time we are calculating this so this q1 will be equal to this so if we put the value of q1 from previous equation into this equation then we can calculate this particular component out of it which is dt1 over d small t 
which computes out to be this particular expression. So what we are seeing here is we are able to calculate rate of change of temperature of component 1 with respect to time as this expression. Similarly, we can also have a derivation for rate of change of temperature with respect to time for component 2 and we are having this particular expression. In both of these, you can see that the parts within these brackets are same for both these expression. So, if we divide these expression with one another, so this equation divided by this equation, we can have a relative rate of heating which can be given by this expression here. So, what we are seeing here is that the rate of change of temperature of component 1 with respect to rate of change of temperature of component 2 means which of the component will heat faster out of the two components. Suppose one component is salt, another, another component is fat, then whether fat with will heat faster or salt will heat faster. So, what are the properties which are affecting this thing is the density, this dielectric loss and specific heat. And what is the relationship? Here you can see if dt1 is on the top or numerator, then we are having rho1 at the denominator. Same for cp1 at the denominator, but epsilon1 is at the numerator means the rate of heating would be high if loss factor is high and it would be low if density and specific heats are high. So, if a specific heat is high, that means it requires more energy to change the temperature. So, that is why if specific heat is high, the rate of change of temperature would be low. It is inversely proportional to specific heat. And for density, if density is high, then it will also need more time to increase in temperature. So, that is why also uh, with respect to density, it is having an inverse relationship. And for loss factor, loss factor was uh, the property which is related to conversion of microwave energy into heat energy. So, if loss factor is high, that means the microwave energy can be quickly converted into heat energy and when it can be quickly done, that means the temperature rise will be quicker or higher. So, that is why it is having a direct proportionality. Now, focusing on to one of the numerical exercise here. So, this is a solid numerical. The dielectric constant of beef at 23 degree Celsius and 2450 megahertz. So, what we are having is we are having a fixed temperature and a fixed microwave frequency already given to you and add those two fixed values of temperature and frequency then we are uh, having the value of dielectric constant which is epsilon dash not a double dash and loss tangent is 0 0.2 what was loss tangent? It was the ratio of, so it is epsilon double dash divided by epsilon dash. So that means uh, when you are having value of uh, uh, this dielectric constant which is epsilon, you are having it as 28 and the ratio as 0.2. So you can have the value of epsilon double dash also already uh, given by this particular data. Then density is given as 1004 kg per meter cube and specific heat is 3250 uh, joules per kg k. Now, what is required to be done? Potato at 23 degrees Celsius with uh, 2450 megahertz has dielectric constant of uh, uh, 38. Now, we are having different material. Previously, those were the properties for beef. Now, we are given the properties of potatoes at same temperature and frequency. Now, we are having different values and two also other properties which is density and specific heats are also given. Now, this question has two parts, so, which is uh, first part is regarding a microwave oven has a rated output of 600 watts. So, what you are given here is this P power has been given and this power is rated. So, it is not the power which is actual, but it, this power which has been given at 600 watt is rated. So, it means when the microwave is running at its full capacity, then it can supply the heat at the rate of 600 watts. 
it will not always provide heat at the rate of 600 watts okay now when 0.25 kg of potatoes were placed inside the oven so you are given the mass density was already given previously now mass is also given temperature rise after 1 minute of heating was 38.5 degree celsius now you are given time and temperature so you are given dt small dt and dt this, this was uh, d capital t so you uh, if you, we are referring to these equation so this dt this was temperature this dt was time so you are given this dt as 1 minute this dt as 38 degree celsius so the these two values are given temperature and time now when 600 gram of potato was heated now another condition has been given previously 250 grams were there 0.25 kg now when 60 gram was heated temperature was uh, rise was 30 40 degree celsius previously you were having this rise but it was in one minute and this rise it is in 20 seconds okay so same same commodity potato we are uh, uh, considering in both cases the mass is different and this uh, rate of heat transfer is also different now what you are required to do is calculate average power output and mass of potato that must be present such that power output is limiting the rate of power absorption rather than capacity of material to absorb microwave so what we mean by this particular sentence so we must first understand this then we will be going for its attempt so there are two things microwave oven has microwave generator which is magnetron magnetron has its own capacity to generate microwave energy that energy is rated at 600 watts okay so microwaves are generated so that they can supply heat energy at this particular rate but as we are providing this heat energy not in the form of heat energy directly but in the form of microwave energy which is required to be converted into heat energy by absorption into the food matrix so the properties dielectric properties of food which are responsible to let the microwave penetrate in as well as during penetration convert that microwave power into heat energy that particular component or role has to be played by the food material so we are keeping our food material as same means the properties are same what is difference difference is that how much quantity of food we are placing inside so if we increase the amount of food placed inside the oven same power will be received by that food which was received with less quantity of food so the overall temperature change of food will be low as you can see when 250 grams was there it took one minute for this rise but when only 60 gram which is lesser then rise was high and time was low that means the rate of heat uh, rate of change of temperature is much higher so what we are having now the conversion of power from microwave energy to heat energy is high so microwave generator is supplying the uh, its uh, at its highest possible capacity and when we are placing less food it is taking that higher amount of energy converting it to heat energy and it heated faster now what we are required to calculate is we are required to calculate the average power output of oven and mass of potatoes so we are having two different things to be calculated first is average power output of the oven means we are having this first condition second condition what we will be doing is we will be calculating how much power this condition is indicating that microwave power uh, microwave oven is able to transfer how much power is this condition indicating so microwave is taking 600 watts of electrical energy but only some power out of 600 watt is it able to transfer into the food matrix in this case a different amount of power taking the same 600 watt energy from the electrical socket okay so this is the input power 
आउटपुट पावर इज रिक्वायर्ड टू बी कैलकुलेट टू टाइम्स एंड टेक एन एवरेज फॉर दिस थिंग वन मोर थिंग मास ऑफ पोटेटोज दैट मस्ट बी प्रेजेंट सच दैट पावर आउटपुट ऑफ अवन इज लिमिटिंग द रेट ऑफ पावर एब्जॉर्बन रेदर देन कैपेसिटी ऑफ मटीरियल और टू एब्सॉर्ब माइक्रोवेव एनर्जी तो बेसिकली वी आर हैविंग टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स टू सेपरेट थिंग्स फॉर माइक्रोवेव एनर्जी टू बी ट्रांसफर्ड फ्रॉम माइक्रोवेव एनर्जी टू हीट एनर्जी फर्स्ट थिंग इज हाउ मच क्वांटिटी ऑफ मटीरियल वी आर टेकिंग इन टू द अवन कैपिटी इफ मोर क्वांटिटी इज देयर देन मोर एंड मोर अमाउंट ऑफ हीट मोर एंड मोर अमाउंट ऑफ माइक्रोवेव एनर्जी कैन बी एब्सॉर्ब सेकेंड थिंग वी कैन ऑल्सो हैव बेटर डायलेक्ट्रिक प्रॉपर्टीज of the food matrix placed inside if conducive environment is there then we will be having higher absorption of microwave energy despite of putting a smaller quantity inside so what we are required to calculate in this case is we are required to calculate only mass of potato and what is the condition in which we are required to do this is that whatever mass of potatoes we are putting inside that must not be limiting the amount of power it can be uh, it, that can be absorbed but the capacity of material to absorb microwave energy is the limiting factor so just let us go on to the calculation part to have a better understanding so first thing first part which was regarding average output power output so here you see we are using this particular equation or formula so what, what is, uh, uh, is given in this particular case here is if we are having 0.25 kg mass of product then the power which the microwave power uh, which has been supplied or transferred is this much this is mcp delta t so this is m this is cp and this is delta t in the form of rate of change of temperature okay so delta t is only this much and this was the time converted into second by using this component so this much power so microwave oven is rated at 600 watt but in this condition it is able to transfer out of 600 watt this many watts but when small amount of material is heated we are seeing a lesser amount of power was it able to transfer okay so this is the case now power absorption which is limiting so this is q by v so per unit volume what is the rate of so uh, here we have seen this was the lower rate so that particular thing has been calculated in this case so rate which is limiting q was that heat transfer volume volume has been calculated by using the density and converted into the uh, these si units we are getting this q by w as this much value so what we are required to do this uh, with this is we are required to calculate this limiting factor here so q by v which is a limiting factor we are using this particular equation for calculating using different value so our different value so this is power over volume so volume is density over mass as density was not given in the uh, given in the si units and we are required to calculate this in what per centimeter cube so to convert into per centimeter cube this is the factor so this is the same thing as this and now what we were asked was we were asked mass so we are rearranging this equation so m here and q by v limiting at the uh, denominator this side and now putting the higher power value in this particular equation so this q by v limiting was calculated by using the that is smaller uh, uh, power absorption rate so that has been placed here higher power rate placed here now we are getting this thing so what it means is it means this 0.08 kg it has uh, came so what it means is this is 80 grams so if we are having 80 grams of potatoes more than 80 grams of potatoes if we are placing then it will be heated more if we are placing less than 80 grams of potatoes the amount of microwave energy that can be transferred from microwave oven to the food will decrease so that was why 
that uh, 60 grams of potatoes were being heated slowly were receiving less amount of power now coming on to the next part of this exercise you b part b part of the same question so b part is that when potatoes and beefs are heated simultaneously what would be the relative rate of heating so it is the direct relationship of this formula which we have previously derived so in this relation in this formula you are getting this relative rate of heating for one component over other component so this is one of the component dt1 and dt2 is another component so what we require is these things so these are just the uh, values of those properties which we will be putting and just calculating the value uh, as asked so by putting these values we are getting this particular thing so what it is meaning it is meaning so uh, one here one is for beefs two is for potato and uh, this ratio is coming out to be 0.565 rate of change of temperature of beef with respect to rate of change of temperature of potato is coming out to be 0.565 so as we are seeing that uh, it, the value this value is coming out to be less than 1 means the uh, thing or the component which was in the denominator is dominating and what do we mean by its dominance its dominance means its temperature rate of change of temperature of the material which was put in the denominator is higher potatoes will be heated faster than the beef it is indicating and at what value it is about half that means potatoes are uh, heated twice as fast okay so beef will be heating slower than potatoes how much slower how much faster that value will be indicated okay now coming over to penetration depth this uh, formula i have already told to you just also refer to it uh, once again coming uh, directly to this question so here we are having one more numerical exercise dielectric properties of broccoli powder with this much 6.9% moisture content at 27.12 megahertz now we are having a different frequency here our dielectric constant as 3.72 and loss factor as 0.05 so we are having these two values for epsilon dash and epsilon double dash electric field strength was measured now we are having here the value of electric field to Uh, field distance which was capital e 28.3 volt per centimeter now what we are required to do is calculate the heat generated in the powder attenuation factor penetration depth of electric field and power so we are having four different things first is heat generated so that means simply this p is required to be calculated formula is here and all properties are given so frequency given 27.12 e it is given 28.3 epsilon double dash is this value so by putting these things we are required to calculate this heat generated then attenuation factor the equation was uh, uh, in the previous page you can just refer back to it this is attenuation factor alpha dash this is its equation so we are having 2 pi over lambda lambda can be calculated uh, from that frequency then epsilon dash was given in case of this uh, tan delta what we can use is we can use epsilon double dash by epsilon dash because both of them are given so by using this equation we will be uh, calculating that now two uh, depths were required penetration depth for electric field and penetration depth for power so two different depths are there so for electric field and power we are having different equations you 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 will be just seeing here so you just see that uh, for power it has been calculated like this tan delta previously calculated so that it can be put in this attenuation factor attenuation factor has been calculated now for field the penetration depth is 1 over attenuation factor and for power it is half of that field so if field depth is 136 meter power is 68 so it is 1 over 2 alpha for power for field is 1 over alpha okay so you remember this thing while attempting such type of questions in examination that we are having two different relationships for penetration depth so penetration depth for field is 1 over alpha so here here you can see the formula for alpha and df this is just the inverse but for power it is not the same for power it is according to this lambert expression 
and what this Lambert expression says is that power falls down exponentially. So as we move from the surface toward the inside or center of the food, then whatever power is incident on the surface, it drops exponentially as we dig deep down that surface. So what is that power of exponent here? E raised to minus 2 alpha d. This d is penetration depth. And if we calculate this P over P naught, it is 1 by E. So it will come E raised to minus 1. And here it will be E raised to minus 2 alpha dash D. So DP comes out to be this value. So DF was 1 over alpha dash. DP is 1 over 2 alpha dash. So DP is half DF. So electric field can penetrate double depth than the power.